check this out. So, I got a new trumpet here. Hello? Hello? I think it works pretty good. RPM Power Sports sent me this because they're freaking awesome. Make sure that you go follow those dudes ASAP. But I'm going to show you this thing a little bit better. Now, obviously, this is an electronic cutout for the old Can-Am here by RPM Power Sports. It's, it's pretty awesome. I'm not going to lie. Pretty awesome. I'm going to be putting that on today. Let you hear what it sounds like. I'm going to show you how hard it is to do all that. Hopefully it's not that hard. But I know that one clamp is going to be a little bit difficult. But let's get into it. Also, if you want to see the unboxing video, you got to go to the, the TikTok. Because I, I did it on TikTok. Not that it's that spectacular. I just opened the box. But follow me on TikTok anyway. First things first, obviously... I take the old exhaust up out of there. You can take these bolts out first, two there, two here. Then you're gonna have to be fighting these little springs back there. Sorry about the lighting, got a headlamp on. This heat shield there that you can see, it's got a, man, it's hard to show you, but it's got a hose clamp on it right there. You gotta take that loose. And then there's a V-band back there. Once you get that V-band off and all that other stuff off, should come out relatively easy. The V-band's a little bit difficult to get loose, even when it was brand new. I already gutted this catalytic converter right here. I'll link that video at the top and possibly uh, down below. I'll, matter of fact, I'll leave a link to everything that I've bought for this thing pretty much down below full parts list I was sitting here thinking I should do a before and after sound but it literally has a switch for that so I'm gonna continue working I don't know what the hell I was thinking all right so all right so now it's loose now I'm gonna pull the springs off back here if I can show it then it should pull off and we'll be ready to install the new one then we'll have to wire it but one step at a time so if you don't have a spring puller this is the best way for me to do it you might come up with something better but this is how I do it also a spring puller is just a hook so let me get this thing out of here now hopefully Check it out, I got it. Obviously, there is a big difference. That one, super shiny. This one, super buddy. This is an XMR, if you didn't know, because uh, it says so right there. Um, so it sees some mud. It's been deep. And it's hard to clean all that off. It'd be a lot easier if it's stainless steel like that. But that is much bigger than that. Now, some people say that you lose horsepower when you open that. I don't see how that's possible. I don't care if it's possible. I don't care if that's the truth. Because this looks way cooler. Going to sound way cooler, as you'll see here in a minute. And I just like it. And I don't care what anybody else thinks about anything. So, there's that. Now, you swap over that. O2 sensor and that V-band clamp and then you put it all back together in reverse. So a lot of guys won't run the factory heat shields but if you want to like I'm going to you kind of have to uh, notch out around this other bung. I guess that's for a wide band O2 sensor or a exhaust temperature sensor whatever 
but I cut it out with some tin snips. So now we're gonna put it back in with all the factory heat shields, unless they don't fit because of the motor. As you can tell, I'm completely out of breath. Those springs, very, very difficult. They're much further apart, but I got them. Got the front heat shield on. Look, that's how I had to get the freaking springs on. Two vice grips, vice grip to each other, but whatever. Now I'll see if I can get this heat shield on. <sighs> and then once I do that, I can run the wires and turn this bad boy on and see what it sounds like. All right, so it's done. You can see that little uh, RPM logo sticking up there. The little nasty exhaust cut out, poking out right there, which is pretty cool. You can kind of see it from the back. Now, trust me, it's a pain in the ass. It's a lot easier to do it if your shit's new or if you don't do mud a lot. That's pretty much all we do in the South is mud. You know, even the rocky terrain is muddy, so it happens. But if you don't usually throw things while you're working on stuff, you could probably manage it without a big deal. Now, it's time to wire it. And I can hear what you're saying already. I don't know how to do wiring. I can't do wiring, but let me assure you, it's easy. There's a power wire there, a ground wire there. That's pretty much it. You plug it into the switch and you plug it into the motor and you're golden. So, all right, as you can see, the wiring is just dangling there. I've got it sitting there because I want to make sure that it's going to work first, which I'm sure it is, but I already had a leak on the exhaust. So right now, I'm just going to set the camera over here, start, start it up, excuse me, and I'll let you see what it sounds like. Here we go. It's a new day. I'm going to try and fit this clip in somewhere else because I forgot that some people would want to see the wiring because right now it just kind of comes around, wraps around the cage, and hooks up to the battery directly. We're not going to be doing it that way. We're going to hook it up to the switched ignition source. Then I got to find out where I'm going to put it because this is full those are full those are full and i have two more there but i don't think i want it there because i accidentally turn on this light all the time so i'm gonna show you how to route it don't mind the missing parts we'll get to that all right so i've decided to remove the override reverse switch i've never ever used it or needed it it was either this one or the mud and trail switch because I've never used it either. I've always either used it in trail or diff lock. So override switch is gonna go and that's where I'm gonna put it. So there it's missing. I'll get a more permanent solution but you can see it under there. I can just reach and hit it and it'll say override. But like I said, I've never used it. So now we're gonna fish all this wire through that hole and then put it in. This thing is really pissing me off. I hate GoPros. Anyway, so now we're gonna take all these wires and we're gonna get them back behind that 
I'm gonna come down behind it and come where these wires are and they're gonna follow through to here. This is where your accessory port is. You got your accessory terminal, your ground, ter no, that's power, ground, accessory. Bottom one is accessory, so let's get it. Okay, you can see it kinda sticking out through there, that little white wire. Then it comes down across, it hooks up to the terminal block. You gotta zip tie all this. If you got rock lights and all that, it's really tight. Look at all them wires in there. The wire that goes to the motor, I shoved back through there. I just got it pulled out from here right now. Now we're gonna zip tie it and get it up nice and clean back here so that we can have it powered and looking good. All right, so I did it as best as I could. I ran it up in there, zip tied, went across next to the head, then came inside. I had a whole lot of extra wire because it could have a four seater, so I tucked it up into there. Maybe put another zip tie right there. Do a couple zip ties through there, comes up to there, and there's the switch. It lights up, open, closed, open, closed. Holy shit. Hey, you're not going to be able to tell because I've seen videos. I watch Blown Budget Off-Road all the time. He's got one of them on here. And good lord, it's freaking loud. I mean, it's almost ear-piercing loud. And I've only just driven around the neighborhood. So I'm going to have to get some better shots for you later. Uh, can't do it in the neighborhood. So it'll either be on TikTok. Well, I know it'll be on TikTok, but it also might be you know, in another video. I'm not sure what that video will be, but huge shout out to RPM Power Sports for sending this out. They also sent me their blow off valve that I installed. I'll link that video down below as well as me gutting the catalytic converter on the stock exhaust, which was also a bitch. Anything working on a Can-Am sucks. Uh, Polaris brake all the time, but they're easy to work on. So is what it is. But also, let me know what you think about maybe me coming out with more shirts. I'm going to have somebody make me some shirts again. And I've got some decals. So if you guys want some decals, hit me up on Instagram. I'll send you one or sell you one. And uh, I guess I'll catch y'all on another video in another six months.